Welcome, everybody, to Handyman's Guide to SolidWorks. I'm Brandon Nelms. I'm a senior application engineer out of Indianapolis. And wanted to thank everybody for coming to take a look here at some of these handy tips that all of us AEs use in our trick bag, um, usually to solve common issues. Uh, similar to a handyman, right? Any good handyman's got a few go-to tools that they're going to keep with them at all times because we know uh, in a pinch, you can take care of really any problem and at least fix and stop the, the hemorrhaging maybe to make sure that you can go back and fix it the right way later some at some point. Uh, so those t tools often include some good vice grips, a good rope, holding up different things. And of course, got to have duct tape. As well as a good multi-tool that's got good Phillips and uh, knives and screwdrivers. And if something that won't move, we can use WD-40. A good bucket, catch any leaks. And a rubber mallet. So we've also got our SolidWorks go-to tools that we use. The first tool that we've got, maybe can th be thought of as vice grips, is the replace face command. This is a surfacing tool and a surfacing technique that can be used to help when you've got a situation where you want to make a dramatic change. And maybe we're just using bosses and cuts and really not uh, any curvy, swoopy shapes, but we'd like to. Maybe we've got a design like this, and we'd like to be able to make changes to finish out the design, something closer to like this, where we've got a nice curvy face in here. So to, to do that, we're going to roll back in our design to a point where we've got the face, or faces, you could have multiple here, that represent what is a blocky shape that we really want to change out with a nice curvy swoopy shape uh, or any selected surface. So we're going to use these two sketches here to represent a boundary surface. So we'll go ahead and pick a sketch for one direction and a sketch, a sketch for direction one and a sketch for direction two. And we've got this great boundary surface here that represents Kind of what that shape is going to be. Now, what you'll notice is that we've got some area where that face doesn't all the way extend out and some that it cuts through. So we really won't get a complete shape if we just use this for a cut with surface. What we really want to use is the replace face command. So the replace face command, simply select a face or multiple faces that you want to change out. So like this face, we want to be replaced with this new boundary that we created. And we click OK, and we've got this entity now all switched up, nice and cur curvy and swoopy. And we didn't have to change up our design too much. Just a couple of features in here, rather than going all the way back to the beginning and figuring out some extra bosses and cuts and extrudes, uh, we could do it with a simple surface body. There are a few things to watch out with this tool is when you replace face, sometimes you can lose reference entities, like in this case for our counter bore holes. We've got a sketch that we need to edit and change some of the relationships. So this will happen with replace face from time to time. Uh, you can lose reference entities, but no problem. We can reattach those quickly and easily. So just reattach the relationships, and now we've got our design taken care of. So replace face, a very handy tool. So the replace face, if you haven't used it, try using it. Go ahead and toss it in your tool bag. Another great tool, we might have the need for some rope. Now, rope is very versatile. It's a very versatile tool, and so is the delete face command. So let's take a look at our design here, and maybe not only is the hole we had to reattach here, we want to change this whole style, and we're going to make this, instead of a counter bore, let's make it a counter sink hole. When we make this a counter sink, well, looks like it's okay. However, we can notice that we've got this little cutout because of where it's located. Uh, we may not like necessarily that finish. That finish is not exactly what we want. Uh, we want this to extend out and trim back. Well, 
You can't really do that with a countersink here because of the way it's located. Now you might think, well, we could try some crazy surfacing techniques, maybe uh, recreate this conical shape or something. Well, a much easier way to do this is the delete face command. So the delete face command, if we select the delete face command, we can select specific faces and do a number of things, either delete, delete and patch them, or delete and fill them with a surface that represents all of the edges or one that represents all the edges where it's tangent. So I'll do a delete and patch here, and we've got a couple of those to take care of on our design. So these little sliver faces. Delete and patch, and there you go. Nice and cleaned up those edges. So we took care of those edges very quickly and easily, um, and our design's taken care of there. Now the delete and patch command is even more versatile that than that. Uh, we can see you can actually even use it if we roll back in our design here. We can use our delete face command there. You can see it being replaced. We can also use the delete face command if we have specific faces created where maybe we don't like a fillet area. When you've got a situation like this where you don't like fillet area the way it's blending together, you can try using the delete and fill with a tangent fill. Sometimes that might give you a better result. So maybe I like that result a little bit better. Now the delete and patch or the delete face command is extremely versatile because beyond just deleting and patching or deleting and filling, we can use it to actually just delete the faces all together. So maybe in this area, delete them all together and leave an open area like this, and then use a boundary surface to represent the way that I want to fill those together. So you can go even further with delete, uh, the delete face command as well. So it's very versatile, much like, much like a rope, you can tie all kinds of knots, use it as a very versatile tool. So let's go ahead and put that in our SOLIDWORKS handyman toolbox. The next tool in our handyman toolbox is duct tape. And for us, for SOLIDWORKS, for me, I always think of the duct tape, very versatile. I love duct tape, use it all the time. Not necessarily the perfect patch, but it can get me out of a lot of jams. And the duct tape of SOLIDWORKS, in my opinion, is global variables. Global variables, very powerful, but can also be used to help us where we cannot capture design intent with dimensions or relations that are connected. Things like up to next uh, or through alls. In this situation, we've got our lettering that was put on our design here, this lettering. And this lettering was done with a number of different thicken commands. So some surfaces that were trimmed up to represent what we want this lettering to look like. And we used the thicken command for those to join everything all together. And the first time we do it, no problem. Unfortunately, you know, these do have to be individual commands. Uh, we can't add, uh, do them all at once. So that means we've got dimensions associated with each one of these. And what's neat is if we select one of these and we try to edit this feature, we can try adding uh, a global variable here. So we could say equals, and then let's say air quote a air quote for a global variable. And SolidWorks says, no, I can't do that. Uh, in situations where we've got a property manager that won't allow a global variable, if we can select our face in the in the graphics area and we can see that dimension, we can double click on it to get to the we can double click to on it to get to our modify box and then type in our global variable. So in this case is a. If we want to create a global variable from scratch, we can use and type in whatever global variable we want and say create new global variable. For this example, I already created a global variable A. So I'll go ahead and click OK and link that to the global variable. So you see that is tied. There's a red sigma there indicating it's tied to the global variable. Now all of these, I went ahead and tied to a global variable A. And all we have to do is go up in our design tree here in our equations. And if we manage our equations, we'll see we've got all of these dimensions that are tied to this global variable A. So now I've got one place to control this 
change that to two, and all of these will update and be all thickened by the same amount. So that is our duct tape tool, is the global variables. So we'll go ahead and put global variables in our toolbox. And let's take a look at our next example. Our next example is the intersect command. Now the intersect command is the multi-tool. When you think of uh, what you need when you go out in the field or need to take care of any problem, multi-tool. You gotta have a multi-tool. Uh, why? Because it's got a lot of different things it could do, right? And that's why we use it. That's why we take it with us. In SolidWorks, the multi-tool is the intersect command. The intersect command. Now, I could have done thicken to create all of these, the thicken command like we did over on this side to create all of that same geometry. Uh, but, you know, that would have been really tough. So another way to create uh, this lettering style geometry here is if we've got these ruled surfaces, right? So these different ruled surfaces that represent the outside edges, we've got a, we've got a thickened body here. And we've got our finished product. So if we've got our thickened body and some other surfaces that intersect, you can use the intersect command. So the features here is the intersect command. And the intersect command is really cool. You can select surfaces, planes, or and or bodies and select all of them. And then you can decide to create intersecting regions, internal regions, or both. I'll go ahead and say let's intersect. And now SolidWorks is going to slice and dice this to find all the different bodies that can be created from these different areas. So I can see all of the, the bodies that are included. I can show all the bodies that are excluded or a mix. So if I say included, all I have to do is come over here into the graphics and left click, and I can start removing bodies. You'll see they're showing up here in the removed section in my property manager over here. Clicking right here shows me the excluded region. So you see the reverse of my included or a mix of the two. So it shows kind of a mix hybrid there. And all I have to do is come in here in the graphics and left click for the different bodies that I don't want to include, that I want to get rid of. This is going to remove those bodies and finish me out with my finished solid bodies. And we've got our finished intersected regions from that intersection command. This is tool is what we like to call the, the multi-tool, the intersect command. Now I'll go ahead and take my surface bodies and hide those. And I've got some solid bodies here left that I need to combine together. So another great command is the combine command. If at any point we don't know where a command is, we just simply type in the search bar here and you can click show or launch it right here from the command. And I'll combine all of these together. So all these command, all of these bodies together into one solid body. And then I'm going to delete heat bodies. So we'll right click and delete keep bodies and say keep that body and get rid of all the excessive surface bodies there. So the intersect command, it's our multi tool. You can do a lot with it. You can slice, dice. Peel all the wonderful stuff, right? So we'll put that in our SolidWorks toolbox here. Another great command is the knit and knit to a radiated surface. So it's almost like our WD-40 because I just think this is so slick. If we've got a situation like our design here where we wanted to create some ridges, we wanted to create these different ridges along the design and we were able to do that with a boss extrude and a nice simple linear pattern the problem is this design is shelled out okay it's shelled out and since it's shelled out we've got extra material in the middle that i don't intend to have there so i need to cut this all out but i want a really robust way to be able to cut everything out in the middle here well if i go back in time here to a point in the design First thing I'm going to want to do is to create closings to all of my openings here. And you can do that with our surfaces tools and select a planar surface, which is all I did here, which was 
creating a planar surface where I pick multiple edges that represent the closing. Okay. And then now what I'm going to do is I've got my nice clean bottom the light way I like it. So I'm going to create a radiated surface. So I'm going to go into insert surface and radiate. Now I'm going to radiate from relative to the bottom face here. So that's relative to the bottom face. And I'm going to radiate along one of these edges. I'm going to radiate along one of these edges. We'll use our top surface here. Along one of those edges and propagating it all the way around. Tangent, flipping the direction to the outside. Maybe making this a little bit bigger and creating a radiated surface. So here's our radiated surface that represents the bottom. And we've also got these caps. Now here's the really neat part of this. When I have a radiated surface, if I use the knit command and I go to knit, this is almost hidden in a, a nice hidden gem. We use this all the time is that we've got our surfaces to knit to. If you knit to a radiated surface, all of a sudden you get this opportunity or seed faces, so you can select seed faces. So I'm gonna select the surfaces that I wanna to knit to, which are my openings and my radiated surface. So there's my radiated surface. Now I've got my seed faces that got populated because I knit to a radiated surface. And now all I have to pick is one face, any big face will do. And I go ahead and maybe select merge entities here, click okay. And I've got this surface body. This surface body now represents the whole inside cap. If I ever change every anything, add additional faces, put a cutout through there or something, it'll always be the same. As long as this face right there remains intact, this radiated surface is gonna help me knit everything together underneath the hood there. So now that I've got that nice radiated surface, my knit surface to the radiated surface there, I've got my design where I have my cool internal guts that I really don't want the rest of that. So what I'll go ahead and do is use the cut with surface and select my radiated surface to cut down with that surface. And now I've got inside all cleared out with a nice little radiated knitting to that radiated surface there to clean out that inside. So that's a pretty slick trick, and we use that a lot of times uh, when we don't want to worry about where things are at in the design tree. Makes it a lot easier if that works out for you. So we'll put those in our SolidWorks toolbox there. Another great tool is the catch-all tool, the bucket, right? The check entity. So if we take a look in SolidWorks, we've got a design here. I happen to like, like everything here. I want to use... This line here so that I can split this face up to be able to add in some fillets and I need those edges because I'm going to use some face fillets and use those as hold lines so earlier in the design I grabbed an edge right there uh, and converted that over for this sketch entity and I'm going to use that for a split line so go ahead and use that for a split line and I've got some nice edges here now that I can use for fillet. This is going to be a face fillet. And I'll pick to fill it from that face to this face. And we'll make a nice curvature continuous with some hold lines. So we'll select this edge. And that edge looks like it looks real nice. It's going to work out well. We'll go ahead and do the same thing. Face fillet here, picking this face and that face. Curvature continuous. We're going to do hold line again. And we'll pick this edge and this edge. And it doesn't want to work. And we have this happen. This ought to work just fine. I know how curvature continuous face fillets work using a hold line. This ought to work just fine. Well, maybe I can trick it. I'm gonna try maybe try and no tangent propagation. Still can't trick it. It's not gonna work. Nothing about what I've done here seems off. So what's the catch-all at this point? The catch-all to make sure to keep myself intact is to go to the Evaluate tab and run a check. This is great for imported geometry as well. We can run a check to see if we've got any problems. So we're looking for invalid faces or edges. 
Go ahead and click check. We've got some faulty faces here, okay? So we managed to make some faulty geometry in this area. So we got a faulty face here, faulty face there, and a faulty face there. Now what has likely happened is that during that converting of that edge, we probably have a little tolerance issue there. And so we've gotten a little greedy. We've got too greedy with our split line. And instead of using the full edge from a previous point in our design, we need to go ahead and create a much simpler sketch where we're connecting these points at this juncture here and using a spline where we have tangent two edges here. Now that is multiple, uh, multiple splines put through there where they're all tangent. And that ought to work a lot better. So let's go ahead and try that with a split line on this. That seems to work. Let's go ahead and make sure the fillet, face fillet works with a hold line on both of those edges. That seems to work. We'll go ahead and do another enter key to repeat that command. Picking the edge here, edge here for a whole line. Look at that. Works nice and beautiful. We'll go ahead and repeat another fillet. And it's going to work again over here. Just the way we'd hoped. And our last hold lines through this final part of our filleting. But the point is that we wanted to make sure to use the check command. Usually we should be okay um, and we shouldn't have a problem when we're creating geometry. But every now and then we can run into a problem where something just doesn't seem right. The check tool will help us to get uh, make sure we've got good geometry that we're working with. So the check commands are catch all. Make sure we're gonna go ahead and put that in our SOLIDWORKS toolbox here. Now the last handyman tool, you gotta to have it, right? And that's the rubber mallet. Sometimes you just gotta force it into submission, right? And for SOLIDWORKS, that's the split and combine tool. We're at a point right here where we've got a design very close, very nearly done, but I want these ridges to be on the other side of my design here. I want them to be on the other side of the design as well. So that was created with a pattern and a sketch and a whole bunch of work that I don't want to do again. So instead, what I'm going to do is use a plane to represent where I want to split this part up between that plane and my front plane. I'll go ahead and use my split command. And I'm going to cut this part up. So I'll chop this part up and you can see we've got multiple bodies. All you have to do is select into the graphics here and you can see it's cut here and that's going to cut this body out. And now I've got two different bodies. So I've got a body here and a body there. And what I'll do is I've got my body here that I want to mirror. So I can mirror a body on this face here. and We'll do a body mirror across. Now we've got our body similar ridge across the top here. And we can now use our combine command to join everything all together. So we can add all of these together into one solid entity, making that super fast and easy, but really forcing that into finish the design out rather than go back and, and try and split this part in half and, and really do that function when it probably should have been earlier in the design. But remember, these are the handyman tools. And it's never necessarily what we want for our finished product, but gets us out of the jam. So we've got our combine and split command that we'll put in there into our SOLIDWORKS handyman tools. So from a SOLIDWORKS perspective, if you want your handyman tool bag all set, make sure that we have our replace face command. Simply selecting multiple faces or one face and we can replace with a different surface body. Really helpful to change the dynamic shape of your part. 
We also want to be able to use the delete face command. Remember, it's a very powerful tool to get rid of faces and replace those faces with either built-in geometry or leave it open as a surface body that you can then create other surfaces to knit all together. We also want to use global variables. Global variables help us to make sure that we can connect other design intents together. Uh, and it's really that area where if we don't have everything all set, uh, we can connect them all together. Our handy tool of intersect to be able to chop up multiple parts. We've got bodies and surface bodies uh, and planes. We can chop it all together and decide what we want to keep, what we want to get rid of, and use that to create multiple new geometries. Remember our slick tool, if we've got a bunch of internal uh, things we want to get rid of, we can use our knit radiate. So if we knit to a radiated surface, we get that option to use select seed faces. So the knit radiate, very handy in our toolbox. Of course, probably our catch-all, one of our most important check to make sure that we don't have any geometry problems. Anytime we're working on a situation where something just doesn't feel right, doesn't seem right, using the check to make sure that the geometry is clean is often a really important catch-all. And lastly, our split and combine. At the end of the day, when we need to fix and finish up geometry and we just can't get it done uh, with going through and editing a design tree, sometimes we just got to force it in there. So splitting up a part, working on a localized area, and then combining it all back together gets us that final design. So hopefully you guys all have now a, a much handier toolbox